As a kid, I loved Power Rangers, and while that could certainly be a whole vlog in and of itself, or several, I'm here to talk about something that I found very interesting while watching the series on YouTube, which I have done over the past couple of months. This started in like December, and I have since watched several seasons of Power Rangers since. Um, I wanted to talk about a very interesting thing today and how the meta of Power Rangers started to make me feel something. We start our story in the town of Angel, of Angel Grove. I think they call it a city. I don't know, maybe they do. The fictional town of Angel Grove in which five young teenagers with attitude are chosen by Zordon and Alpha to become the Power Rangers. Now, there are originally five Rangers. This picture has... I knew I was going to do this. This picture has six. Um, this is because part of the way through the first season of Power Rangers, which aired in 1993, they added a sixth ranger, the green one. <laughs> the green one, uh, Tommy Oliver. But the ones down here... This is the comedy of the video, by the way. Um are the original five. If you were to take a picture of the Power Rangers and show it to someone and ask them to name anyone they could in the Power Rangers, they would likely name one of these five or six people. People, we have Zack, Trini, Jason, Kimberly, and Billy. That's the original five Power Rangers. They are the most famous, they are the classic cast, um, and we will never see them together on screen again because unfortunately two of the people in this image have passed away um but these are the og these are the og rangers um like i said the first season of power rangers was very long actually there were over 60 episodes in it i watched all of them they are repetitive as hell um and it's a testament to how formulaic the show was originally that there were 60-some episodes where very little things happened. Now, sometimes things happened, like the arc with Tommy Green with Evil, which was four episodes of Tommy being evil before they broke Rita's spell on him and he became a ranger. You know, he became a ranger in a limited capacity. Look, I, look let me just tell you something about Tommy Oliver, because we're going to talk about him a lot in this video. Everyone wanted to be fucking Tommy Oliver growing up, Okay. I wanted to be him. He was cool. He was the coolest guy. We all thought he was the most badass guy, but when you go back and watch the series nowadays, <laughs> like, Tommy gets nerfed in every single episode. In every episode, Zordon's like, all right, Rangers, go fight the new evil of today. And then he's like, wait a second, Tommy, you can't go because you have to conserve your powers. And this goes on, like, not only through all of season one, during which Tommy loses his powers permanently at least once. <laughs> um, it actually bleeds into season two. Now, season two is where something starts to happen a little bit. At the very beginning of this season, a small change to the show is introduced. The villain, Rita Repulsa, is replaced by new original villain, Lord Zed. And I say original villain because if you don't know, the Power Rangers are based off of... A Super Sentai show from Japan and it's, it's really the other thing that's really fun about watching Power Rangers as an adult is trying to pick out the Sentai footage and it's actually pretty easy to do um, some of the time other times it's not but um, yeah Power Rangers is based on um, the uh, Super Sentai Tokusatsu, toks, tokusatsu style show that had been running in Japan for a long time, and specifically, the Power Rangers is based off of Zeo Ranger, which was about people in spandex and dinosaurs. Really descriptive. But they only had so much footage of the, uh, of the Rangers fighting in these suits, right? Because Super Sentai moves on. Every year, they change. They have a brand new cast, a brand new story, and then every, every story is one, pretty much one season. Um, that has a beginning, middle, and end. Um, so the original Zoo Ranger footage only went so far. 
it's a really interesting concept, especially when you go back and look at it. Because, like, as a kid, I had no idea any of that shit was going on. Also, I just realized that this is Jason's foot. <laughs> What's his foot doing there? It doesn't belong there. What the hell? Anyway, um, so season two introduced a couple of new changes. They got rid of Rita because they had run out of... They had, they had reused the Witch Bandora footage so many times over the course of the last 64 episodes that they could not possibly use it again. Um, so that was the first little change. The second little change was that our boy Tommy Oliver ran out of Green Ranger juice again. <laughs> and he was like, he was like gone for a little while. And everyone felt real bad about it. And it seemed like this big thing. It was used to create drama back then, which I knew nothing about because I never watched these episodes in serialization. So, you know, that happened. Um, and eventually Tommy came back as the White Ranger, who we'll see in a minute, um, part of the way through season two. Another small change. The other small change that happened in the beginning of this is that the Zords were changed from the original dinosaurs into mythical creatures, which were Zords from the next Ranger, uh, after Zero Ranger, Die Ranger. Are we good about that? Because I'm not going to talk about the Sentai all day, I promise. Um... So, Power Rangers was getting big. They were already starting to plan the movie, I guess, because it filmed sometime towards the end of season two. Um, and it was, a, it was a massive success, as you all know. Um, so here's the thing. With that comes the uh, question of what do we pay these people? And that question got really heated in the middle of season two. Um, <laughs> case in point, it was actually the three on this end here, um, Walter Jones, Tweet Trung, and Austin St. John, uh, started to, I'm now noticing Walter Jones's foot here. I think his name, I think his last name is Jones. I'm probably f***ing that up and I feel really bad. Zach. I'm bad. <laughs> Anyways, um... Man, I need to edit these videos. Anyways, welcome welcome to my vlogs if you haven't seen them. Um, anyways, those three thought they should be making more money. And probably they should have. So what happened? They wrote them out of the show by sending their characters to a peace summit internationally. Which is a very strange thing to do. Because, like, there were so many opportunities to just, like, not... Do, like, it seems like a weird reason for them to not be Power Rangers anymore. Um, especially considering what Tommy had to go to go through to keep being a Power Ranger <laughs> at that point. So what happened was the show's first major change. The, the transition, by the way, is hilarious because they had to film a couple of episodes before the cast change without these three characters. <laughs> so it's really funny how like you'll only see uh, Tommy, Billy, and Kimberly in the actual plot of the episode, and then like halfway through, Alpha's like, I'll just have the other Rangers meet you there in costume already so we don't have to show their face. And it's actually really funny to watch. Um, so yeah, those three left, and then we had this lineup. Uh, the show introduced uh, Adam, who's over here, as the new Black Ranger, um, Aisha, the new Yellow Ranger, and Rocky, 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 the new Red Ranger. You can also see Tommy in his White Ranger garb right there, um, which he would remain in for the rest of uh, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series. Um, this was the lineup until uh, the end of season two, which did not really like cut off like like the original season did it wasn't like when season three started you know there was some new villain introduced or anything that in fact pretty much nothing changed um in the move from season two to season three now pretty early on they introduced a new villain called rito ribalto um they destroyed the zords and got a new one because oh hey we ran out of die ranger footage so we have to move on to copy ranger footage um, we can't keep the Zords, we have to, but we can keep the suits, apparently. Um, season 3 was interesting for a number of reasons. Um, it u they used different ranger suits, like they got ninja powers, so like there were these ninja segments where they were 
dressed like ninjas and did weird ninja things for a little bit. Um, but season three was actually pretty consistent. We still had Zed. Rita came back in late season two and married Lord Zed. So we had those two working as, as together as villains. Um, we still had these rangers and uh, we still had um, Zordon and Alpha as backup, uh, who I mentioned at the very beginning. But they've actually been consistent this whole time, which is going to be important later. Um, but what's really interesting about this cast is that, like, I don't know, people don't really look at the, you know, again, if you were to show somebody a picture of the Power Rangers in costume, you know, there's no way that anyone's going to point to the to the Yellow Ranger and be like, that's Aisha, right? And certainly, certainly no one's going to point to the Red Ranger and be like, dude, Rocky. Like, that just didn't happen. Like, as a kid, I, I guess I kind of knew what was going on. Um, because I had the movie and I loved the movie and like Jason Trini and Zach weren't in the movie and I never questioned it I never questioned it whatsoever so I don't know what the hell was going on with that I mean I guess my stupid kid brain was just like it doesn't matter who they are they're the Power Rangers they're awesome <laughs> um so yeah it's very but, it, but what's interesting about this is that so um the original three Rangers right that I talked about that left were on the show for a season and a half. So they stayed all the way through season one and then through part of the way through season two. But the new Rangers stayed through the rest of season two and all the way through season three. Which means they actually spent about the same time as as Rangers as the original most famous five. Which is really interesting to me when you think about it. Now season two is a bit long is a bit shorter than season one was i think it's like just by a couple of episodes a handful um and then season three is even shorter still um towards the end of the season we would get this really weird arc where the where the rangers over here got transformed into kids as rita and zed's final thing um with some help from rita's father master vile who is a bonkers villain who wears tiny sunglasses and that's all i'm gonna say about that you can figure out the rest yourself um the other main thing that happened in season three is that uh, we lost another of the original rangers, and that was Kimberly. Kimberly, the pink ranger, uh, Amy Jo Johnson, had decided to move on and uh, go do bigger and better things with her career. Um, she was written out far more tastefully than the original three were. Um, she had a whole arc about, um, you know, some gymnast coach coming in and, and uh, you know, offering to be her mentor. Um, she was replaced by, uh, a character called Cat, who was originally working for Rita, and who eventually turned good, because of course. Um, and it's it, important to note, though, she was evil, turned good, and then it was like an episode or two before she actually became the Pink Ranger in an arc dedicated to the transfer of the Pink Ranger power, which was cool. Like, it was a very smooth transition, especially compared to what they had to do last time, which was just um, put some people in suits. We're not going to worry about it. Um, so that was the main cat. Look, the, the thing that blows my mind about that is that I did not know as a kid that Catherine was ever in the Mighty Morphin pink suit. I always assumed that she started at Zeo, which is weird. <laughs> but, like, that's how it was. I didn't see all the episodes of Power Rangers as a kid. Um, so here's the thing. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, by the end of season three, had been on for over 150 episodes. Rita and Zed had failed, like, 150 actual fucking times to destroy the Power Rangers. Except at the end of season three, they succeed. Um, which leads to a, an attempt to revitalize the show by revamping everything. This is the biggest change the show has had, um, because we're going in to Zeo. Look, I actually love Power Rangers Zeo. I feel like this is actually the series that I have the most connection with, because I was f five or six when it actually came out, so I felt like I was a little bit closer to it in age and had a better understanding of what was going on. It may have actually been contemporary when I was, like, starting to watch television. Um, so, um... I very distinctly remember Zio. 
Um, the cool thing about Zio um, is what it changed about the series. Um, Zio kept most of the same cast. Um, as you can see, we still have... Uh, so Catherine is over here in the Pink Ranger suit now. That's her. Um, Rocky is in the... Rocky becomes the Blue Ranger. Adam becomes the Green Ranger. Um, Tommy becomes the Red Ranger instead of the White Ranger. And this, like, begins the tradition of the Red Ranger really being the leader character. Because even when Jason comes back to be the jo the, the, jold, the Gold Ranger um, halfway through the season... Um, he doesn't really take over that leader uh, position from Tommy. Um, the only change between Season 3 of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Power Rangers Zeo uh, was that Aisha was replaced by Tanya. Um, and, like, as a kid, I don't know that I processed that either, really. But I could absolutely name Aisha if you showed me Aisha and Tanya if you showed me Tanya. I don't know. Um, it's interesting to note that it makes uh, Aisha the shortest lived character on the show um, at that point because she had only been on for a season and a half so kind of an interesting thing to note um, but not only did Zio bring about uh, change within the, the suits which is a big thing um, it also changed in enemies Rita and Zed were retired um, they were demoted to sort of these like intermittent comedy relief characters that would only came back sometimes. They were replaced with the Machine Empire, which was an entirely new set of villains based on the uh, Sentai of the time, O Ranger. Um, so it was it was a brand fresh new coat of paint for the show. Um, the other thing that happened was that the Power Rangers' original base of operations, the command center that had lasted for three seasons, was replaced by the Power Chamber. So that was another It was another example of the change. Of course they got new Megazords, because it's a given at this point, but it was big news because the suits changed, um, and the whole idea of the show basically changed. I mean, it, was, it still ended up being singular episodes of them fighting the villains, um, you know, over and over and over again for... 50 some episodes I think Zio was um but I don't know I personally I feel like the writing and the concept of the show got way better with Zio um like it felt like the characters were actually allowed to be characters the two comedy relief characters Balk and Skull who by the way have been here all three seasons and I haven't mentioned them for some reason um got a lot of development in Zio um and I just feel like Zio was overall just like way better quality the characters just felt so much better <laughs> it was it was cool and like you know the the machine empire went through some inter went through some interesting and dynamic changes throughout the the course of the show so it actually felt like it was moving along even though it i think like Z rita and zed were more effective in season three because they actually managed to do damage to the power rangers and steal some of their zords and shit um it really felt like in Zio there was actually there was an actual story going on, and for the first time in true Sentai fashion, the uh, Machine Empire was actually taken down by the end of Zio, making them a one-season uh, set of villains. Um, at the end, um, Jason lost the Gold Ranger powers; he had to give it back to that thing, and Zio ended kind of abruptly. I have to say, like the ending of Zio, I I'm not like getting too much into opinions right now, but like. The ending of Zio was like kind of rushed. It was surprisingly not a multi-parter and was instead just a one-part thing <laughs> where the, um, you know, the original owner of the gold the gold Zio powers comes back, makes everybody grow, and they fight King Mondo, and King Mondo loses. Um, it really didn't feel like a finale, and I feel like that's like one of the main disappointing things about Zio. Um, and it's 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 kind of unfortunate in that way, but um, I still really liked Zio. Watching Zio was actually really fun, um, especially especially because watching the first three th first three seasons was like really monotonous. I was like literally in it just to see what monster costumes I had action figures of as a kid, <laughs> but I ended up watching like 150 episodes. It was crazy. Um. So yeah, that was Zio. Um, Dio was a one-season show compared to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers three seasons, okay? Um, 
And then came Power Rangers Turbo. Power Rangers Turbo was kicked off with a canon movie um, that brought the Rangers into a into the next level. Um, and this is the uh, t- wow. This this picture actually looks really shitty, um, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> we'll talk about it. And uh, so the transition from uh, Zio to Turbo actually felt a little. But a tiny bit more natural because we had already done Mighty Morphin Power Rangers into Zeo. And the transition from Zeo into Turbo was pretty much a similar deal at that point. Um, in which the, um, you know, the suits changed, the Megazord changed, the villains changed. Instead of Rita and Zed coming back, we got the space pirate Divatox. Let me take a drink. And that's just kind of how it went. Um, so Turbo was a new series in the same way that Zeo was. Um, and it started with that movie where they got the new Turbo powers, bought Divatox for the first time, and that's sort of, uh, that's sort of how it went. Um, so, yeah, but here's the thing about Turbo. The movie was okay. I mean, it was pretty good. It's, like, not quite as good as I remember it being as a kid. Um, But for, like, a movie, for a a long, big-budget episode of Power Rangers, it's actually not that bad. The main... The other main thing to happen to the cast in the movie was that Rocky the Blue Ranger is replaced by Justin the Blue Ranger, who, you may notice, is a 90s child. I didn't like this change. A lot of people didn't like this change. And I think the reason I didn't like the change is because, like, the nice thing about the Power Rangers prior to this was that, like, it felt like you had to grow up a little bit to be in the Power Rangers, so it was, like, something to aspire to. And I think that that was just about right for a show about uh, teenagers kicking ass, because kids don't know what to do with those powers. Let me tell you, they do not. Um because I liked the fighting as a kid, and that was about it. Um, So, yeah. The reason I didn't like it is because, like, I looked at Justin and thought, well, I'm a better kid than he is. I should have been the Blue Ranger. You know, I'm only five, but, like, he's only five. Um... The reason they went with a kid and aged him up for the morphing sequences was because uh, I believe Saban, the company that produced Power Rangers, had a really good um, reaction with a series called Beetleborgs, which was the same thing as Power Rangers. It borrowed uh, tokusatsu footage from uh, Japan um, and had kids that morphed into uh, robotic beetle characters. And I think that's why they brought Justin in. But it was an awkward decision and it was really not the the last awkward decision made about Turbo. Turbo's tone was decidedly different from Zeo, trying to be a little bit more silly and a little bit more campy, and literally every episode is about Divatox planting a bomb somewhere and saying, now the Rangers will never find it, except they always do, lady. So maybe you just, like, want to get a little bit more creative? Like, even Rita and Zed did a better job, like, coming up with creative ways to hair the Rangers. It was pretty bad. Um, The beginning of Turbo is also where things got really weird, because, like, they replaced Zordon and Alpha, like, two episodes in, and they did not telegraph this at all. Like, again, the transition with Kimberly was telegraphed. Uh, You know, Aisha was properly written out of the show you know rocky got his ending in the turbo movie and was actually in the first three episodes of of the show but zordon and alpha like just poof (laughs) like like one episode they're like the comet's coming it's time to leave and then they left and they were immediately replaced by two characters that were way more annoying. They got replaced by Demetria, who originally spoke entirely in questions, and Alpha Six, who spoke like Jive for some reason. 
The tonal shift in Power Rangers Turbo was really, really weird. And there was another big thing coming with the show. As a kid, I would have never have seen this coming, and God, if I were watching it in order, I would have been so broadsided by what happens about, oh God, 19 episodes into Turbo. It was at this point. Now look, hang on a second. You may notice something here. There are now uh, two rangers who have been on the show for more than like one or two seasons, right? And that's Tommy and that's uh, Adam. Like Tanya's, Tanya was, it was in Zio and Catherine started in the original uh, MMPR season three. Um, but we had, uh, Tommy has been around the longest. He's like the only one at this point. Um, I never even talked about what happened to Billy. He left. There were things. That's a long story. I'm not going to go into that actually. Um, my point is, is that Tommy was really the only one at this point with a connection to the original five. Um, Adam, you could argue, but Tommy was like the OG at this point. He was the leader. He was the leader in season two, three, Zio, and now Turbo. He was a huge, important character. And like many other actors before him, and, and like the five or six actors before him, let me not say that many, um, he had started to express his interest to leave the show. He wanted to do this with Zio. But somehow he got uh, roped into staying uh, for at least part of Turbo. And I don't know. In Turbo, you can definitely tell he's not giving it his all. He's barely in any group shots. He's, like, driving cars for the first five episodes of the goddamn show. Um, and he just, he's not giving it his all. You can tell he's done with the show. And you can kind of tell that be with the other character who was poised to leave, uh, Catherine. Catherine had also expressed that she wanted to leave the show as well. I think it, I don't know if it was before or after the switch to Turbo. Um, needless to say, it was coming. Let me show you what happens after uh, episode, I think it's 19. Let me double check. Hang on. I have it up. That's why I know. Yeah. Let me show you what the cast looks like as of... <laughs> episode 19 of Power Rangers Turbo. This is it. You may notice that only Justin is remaining at this point. And Justin, the Blue Ranger, just got introduced at the beginning of Turbo. So within 20 episodes, the entire old cast is out. Zordon and Alpha are out. We have new villain Divatox as our villain with no intervention uh, from past villains as had been the case in Zio. The entire show has changed at this point. It becomes sort of a ship of Theseus thing where it's like, all right, we've replaced the sails, we've replaced the bow, we've replaced the stern, you know, it's still the same ship, though, we promise. Literally, the only things that are the same about this show are some of the settings and the fact that Bulk and Skull are still in it. Don't get me started on the fact that Bulk and Skull don't get a big goodbye um, to our original dudes that they were actually friends with. Because that pisses me off a little bit. In fact, the whole, the whole transition was really murky. Look, I just watched Passing, Passing the Torch Part 1 and 2 today, which is the, the episodes where they change. And boy, is it not smooth. Once again, as is the case in Turbo, they're just like, all of a sudden, oh yeah, by the way, this is your last mission, and we will be transferring the powers after this. And it's like, it's not a, it's not a four-part arc. It's not a huge thing where a bunch of villains come back and lead the rangers to their darkest hour. It's literally just a stupid thing where Tommy hangs above a freaking void and like uh, the new pink and, and red rangers who aren't the pink and red rangers yet um, go in and save him. It's a really messy transition. And at this point, the show just does not feel like a show anymore. Zio was really respectful of what Mighty Morphin Power Rangers had developed. 
it still it took character arcs from those previous three seasons and used them jason when he came back as the gold ranger was still beat up over what happened with tommy's green ranger powers from like the first season it was a great continuation of his arc and a beautiful reflection when towards the end of the season jason starts not being able to control the gold ranger powers it's such a it's like it's surprisingly well thought out and then turbo just isn't and turbo is where the connections to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers stop. Now, this continuity of Power Rangers continuity would end with the next season in space, which uses most of these characters as its rangers. But um, after that, they started going the Sentai route and having a new team of rangers played by a new team of actors in pretty much every subsequent season. So... Why am I talking about this? You've literally been watching this summary of Power Rangers for 30 minutes. Why am I talking about this? It's because tomorrow is a big day for me. I want to talk a little bit about Tommy Oliver, that character that was there throughout the whole thing. That's why I think that many kids remember Tommy. I don't know that they necessarily... <clears throat> I mean, I think a lot of kids thought the Green Ranger and the White Ranger were badass. But, like... For me, it was the fact that Tommy was the leader and remained the leader and remained this constant throughout the show that uh, rem that was always there. He was the glue that kind of held the show together for me. I wanted to be him. I've, I freaking LARPed as him a lot as, as a kid, whether it was like diving into the pool or whatever literally diving into the pool like I, I i would have to explain that reference but like and i'm not going to but like there was a dive into the pool that i did that was that was the tommy oliver dive it exists i always wanted to be tommy oliver and it's weird to say that at this point in my life I kind of have been Tommy Oliver. Let me take you back to March of 2016 when I started my new job, my first job, my first job. It was in a retail environment. There were about six or seven people working there. Um, my friend got me the job. Um, you know, there were several, several people there, uh, you know, older than me who are working there, um, you know, and a couple of couple of younger people. Um, and a lot of them had, had been there a long time. Um, my manager had been there a while. Uh, the assistant manager, the supervisor had been there for, uh, I think, almost 20 years at that point. Um, so it was a pretty um, tight-knit crew. It was my first job, so I didn't really know what to expect. Um, and a couple months into my job, the friend who, uh, who got me the job was let go. So here I am. I'm like, okay, well, my friend's not here. This just got a whole lot worse, you know. And then another person who was hired a week after me, they got let go, you know. And then they were replaced. And then somebody else replaced and got hired. And then eventually you know the assistant manager who i had you know gotten a little close with um she stepped down and she eventually left um they replaced her by promoting um one of the full-time people who was there um and they tried to uh they tried to hire a supervisor and they hired one they had one who left and then they had another who also left um so we just kind of ended up in the ba in the same position where, um, you know, it was just the one supervisor who was an older lady who had been there for, again, probably 20 years at this point that I'm talking about. Um, so, you know, I'm learning. I go full time and I just keep learning because, you know, that's what I do. I go into a place. I learn. I try to uh, adapt. Um, so we're going. The, uh, the assistant manager moves into another department. So we hire another assistant manager. This is about 2018 now. Um, and that assistant manager stays. Uh, 
as a constant. Um, so it's, you know, the manager who's been there the whole time and the assistant manager who, you know, at this point I'm expecting, yeah, who knows if she'll stay or not. Um, so they both, you know, they're both kind of there. The supervisor is there. She's been there and I know her and I'm actually friends with her now, even though like she apparently does not make friends with very many of her coworkers. She liked me. Um, and I just kept learning. Now, a bunch of people changed around me at that point. Um, we had been through several people on my uh, level, you know, part-timers, full-time, full-time basic retail, you know, cashier people. Um, and, uh, you know, so I had sort of gotten used to people coming and going. Um, and then the plot twist of COVID hit. Um, and things got a little weird. We had to work under new circumstances. It was like the writers were like, let's introduce this new thing to make this season interesting. Um, and they ended that season with, uh, the biggest plot twist up to that point because my supervisor that I had made friends with when no one else did, um, passed away from cancer at the end of that year. Um, at which point I became the supervisor. Um, so then we got kind of another person, um, as a full timer. Um, and I was sort of in that, that leadership role, <laughs> awkwardly enough. Um, so that was 2021 and then 2022 came and, uh, a big, a big change was poised to happen our uh our company got bought <laughs> um so we spent all of last year in a merger and as a result of that the assistant manager left uh before the actual merger happened and my manager who had been there for 40 years at that point left when the merger was finished so when the merger happened it was like an it was like i had been there for over 6 years and the uh the next person the next highest person who had been in that branch had been there for only 2 years and past that it was only like a year it was just a whole new team of people we got a new manager eventually we got a new assistant manager um but at that point it was like I was the only one who had worked with that supervisor and I was the only one who worked with that manager who all of our customers knew you know and it was just like a whole different ball game it was a lot of new rules you know there was a new look to the place um, you know how I did my job was was changed you know forever uh, <laughs> at that point and uh, you know it was a weird experience because I was the only one left that people knew and in some cases it, it, it a lot of a lot of our customers left during that time or changed or, or complained or whatever and you know I'm the only one they knew And when I was watching Power Rangers, I related each time the cast changed because I'd been through that at that point. It's like, I know what it's like to have those people swap out and things just kind of keep on going as normal. You know, I know what happens when you have the big changes, when the whole tone of the show changes, you know? And when I got to Zio, I felt strangely like I knew this feeling from somewhere. And Zio, I realized, was the merger, right? We took on a brand new face. We had a cast dressed in all new clothes. We had new rules. We had new 
conflicts. We had a new setting. And once that merger stuff was done and the dust settled and we had our, our new manager who permanently, that began the Power Rangers Turbo era. And it's at that point that I really started relating to Tommy Oliver, the Green Ranger, the White Ranger, the Red Ranger. In my own weird little retail-centered way, I kind of accomplished that old dream of mine to be Tommy Oliver because I felt like I was part of this OG crew that knew all the beginning ones that knew all the good ones all the ones that people can name all the all the members of my workplace that people fondly remember I'm the only one that knows them And it's a weird feeling. I watched my my own workplace go through that same Chip of Theseus transformation as the show Power Rangers. And that's the part I related to. And when we were done with the merger and the new team was more or less set, I felt like I was in this leadership role, this mentorship sort of position. I felt like I was the most powerful one in the room. Like I was the strongest, like I knew the most and I solved the most problems. And I think to some degree that is an accurate thing. That's true. And it was a bizarre feeling watching through Power Rangers and being like, you know what? I really am Tommy Oliver. Maybe not one of the originals, but I knew them. And I saved watching Passing the Torch, part one and two, Tommy's last episodes in the series until much later. Because tomorrow is my last day in that branch, in that show. I am at my own personal passing the torch moment. And while the past couple of days have certainly felt like Honey, I Shrunk the Rangers, yesterday, or today and tomorrow... I think are really going to feel like passing the torch. Because after watching all of those people go and how things just continue, I know. I know that Monday is going to be that branch's stitch witchery, which is the first episode not to feature Tommy and any of the original Rangers. It was just this bizarre thing. It was a bizarre case of me watching the right media at the right time. Even though it didn't seem like it was going to make any sense. I started watching Power Rangers before I knew I got this job. And it happened during, uh, probably while I was watching the end of season three and going into Zeo. And it was just weird how slowly I started to realize that Oddly enough, Power Rangers, of all things, is an odd reflection of my life in a way I never thought it would be. And that's so weird. But I really do feel like for a time, for these last couple months, I've been the Red Ranger of that branch. You know? I've been the badass veteran, the veteran ranger. 
I've been away. I've been in a weird way, my own version of Tommy Oliver. We had new two new people start in February, and I kind of feel like that's where the torch has passed. It seems like they're going to remember me pretty fondly there, and I think a lot of the customers are will see me leaving as the end of an era. So it's pretty interesting. It's been an interesting time. And uh, I really wanted to record this vlog before tomorrow um, because it's such an interesting concept to me. It really is. But I'm kind of proud of it. It's kind of something that makes me more proud of what I've done over the past seven years by putting it into that perspective. You know, because I, in those years, I mean, the only ones who stuck around nearly as long as I did were the people who were there long before I was. It's just an interesting feeling, you know? And again, I can't believe the timing on, on watching that particular piece of media at the time when it related to me in this way. It's pretty cool. So hey, always look out for the things in your life that could be bigger than they are, I guess. I don't know how to put it, but that's how it is. And that's my story. That's how Power Rangers Turbo was oddly relatable.